Welcome to another Mission Object Oriented Scripting Engine presentation. My name is Mike, I go by the nickname Pikes on the Moose Discord, and we have brought you this video as a guide to help you get the best from Moose. Welcome to the first session of a two part episode looking at DCS tasks. We need to know the DCS theory in order to be able to understand what the AuthTrack class is doing. Part 1 will focus on explaining what DCS tasks are. This includes the basic reason for wanting to script tasks. The final topic in the first session will cover the explanation of the four different types of DCS tasks. For this we will use the Mission Editor UI to see clearly how they are used. In part 2 we will explain the theory of the controllables task queue. The task queue helps us understand how an AI controllable views the ordering of its task processing. Then we will look at two scripting examples. In the first example we will be spawning an AI airplane in real time and then issuing it a task. In the second example will be our first look at how AuthDrag simplifies the process of setting an AI's task in real time during the execution of a mission. We'll conclude with a look at the information sources for further learning. So what are DCS tasks and what do they do? Well simply DCS tasks are Lua tables of instructions. They affect AI behavior and they dictate when AI routines can begin. There's four different types of DCS task and these are primarily available in the mission editor. So what do DCS tasks do? Well, they permit the AI to perform their routines. So an AI routine may be to engage or attack a target. What do DCS tasks not do? What they can't do is they can't alter the moment to moment movement of units in any detailed way. And this means they cannot change whether an aircraft moves left or right, how it intercepts or what it does. It only enables the Eagle Dynamics simulator AI to start its progress. Why would you need to script a task? Well, for example, you want to instruct and direct units and groups. You would need to give them tasks. If you are doing anything that's not in the mission editor, you would need to do it via scripting. A situation might be that you bring in all your units via late activation and you instruct those units on demand. Another reason you can't use, oh, you need to use tasking, but you can't use uh, a template in DCS Mission Editor that's late activated because it's just not appropriate to use a template for something that happens dynamically. Routines that attack or defend, evade, fly from A to B are initiated based on the tasks that are set from the mission editor. And by default, a unit will not take actions apart from the return to base on its own. DCS tasks are initiated during the simulation by the simulator scripting engine. So what are the four types of tasks? The most important type of task that we have is the en route task. The en route task is a, a task that's given to an AI controller that gives it its basic fallback behavior and it underpins all the other tasks on top of it. The en route task will always be a lowest in priority but it will be 
continued across all of the waypoints and throughout the flight. You'll see this as in the mission editor as a as a task. It will show task and the most popular ones are CAS and CAP. But CAS and CAP are not taken literally. It's not a combat air patrol or close air support. What the task is, is a filter to allow the AI to attack certain units. The second task is the perform task task. And this allows an instant and more um, direct approach to getting the AI to do something specific like attack a specific target or bomb a runway. What the AI will do on receiving that task is it will attempt to perform that and go through an AI routine. And then we have commands and options. And commands and options are very similar. They're instantly created they take effect immediately and they affect things like your rules of engagement for AI, how it will use flares or chaff, whether it will use missiles optimistically and it also sets radios, frequencies, tacans, beacons and those types of things. Within scripting there's a fifth table that's needed and this table you'll only need to see it in scripting and it is the mission table. But that's a fancy word for just the string of waypoints uh, that compile into a root plan. That's the end of part one. In part two, we will look at examples and task precedents.